Hallelujah. Glory to the Most High God, maker and possessor of heaven and earth. This is David Igbona Ministries. I am David Igbona. I welcome you to this live prayer service. We are going to be praying and we are going to be um, praying against fear. We are going to be praying against delusions and deception. The emphasis is going to be against the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. We're going to be praying against the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. And so I want you to pray along, fellowship with us, and share this video to as many as you can. God is going to do something in your life, in my life today. When we pray together, our prayers are ten times more effective. The Bible says one will chase a thousand and two will chase ten thousand. So our prayers are at least ten times more effective when prayed in agreement. And we, well, the Bible also says that we should pray so that we do not fall into temptation. So if we pray, we are able to resist temptation, overcome temptation. But if someone prays for us, God intervenes. Yes, God intervenes. But it is better when we pray together. Because in that way, God will hear your prayer and my prayer, and we would also grow spiritually. And that is why it is better that somebody, uh, that I don't just come up and start making pronouncements, but rather you are praying the same prayer points that I am praying. God bless you, Raju. I see you online. God bless you. Please share it, Raju. Thank you for joining so we pray together in agreement so that our prayers will be ten, at least 10 times more effective. Amen. Let's begin by giving God thanks and praise. Let's thank him. Just thank him for what he's done in your life. Say, Lord, you are so good. Blessed be your name. Lord, you are so good. We thank you for today. We thank you. You are kind. You are merciful. You are God. We are grateful in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for your goodness and your kindness towards us. We thank you, Lord. It is you, O oh God, that has helped us. It is you that has kept us from harm. We thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for yesterday. We thank you for today. We thank you for tomorrow. We thank you for you have begun a great work and you will complete it in our lives. We thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. Just thank him for what he has done for you. There are things he has done in your life that you should thank him for. He has done great things for you in your life. Give him praise and give him thanks. He is God. Thank him for your going out. Thank him for your coming in. Give him thanks. Give him thanks. Hallelujah, Father, we just thank you. We thank you for your protection, for your provision. We are grateful, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. We give you thanks, Lord. Blessed be your name. Thank you for protecting us against attacks of the enemy, protecting us from our own errors of judgment. We thank you. We thank you that we have food to eat, water to drink. We thank you for the shelter. We thank you that you are doing great things in our lives. We give you praise and we give you thanks. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. And now I want you to thank the Lord for how he has guided you. The Lord has guided you and kept you from harm. I want you to give him praise. Give him thanks. He has kept you from harm by guiding you. Thank you. Say, Lord, we thank you for your guidance. 
we thank you that you have kept us on track we thank you lord god for giving us wisdom we thank you for keeping us from presumptuous sins keeping us from errors we thank you in the mighty name of jesus oh lord you are so good blessed be your name in heaven you are the lord on earth you reign forever we thank you in the mighty name of jesus lord we thank you in jesus victorious name the bible says a thousand will fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand but it will not come near you god said a thousand will fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand but it will not come near you hallelujah you are alive despite all that we hear on the media the false news and the real news the plague did not destroy you it did not come into your home and wreak havoc the aim of the devil is to steal to kill and to destroy so if satan cannot kill you give him thanks because you are blessed by god give him thanks thank him that the plagues you have heard about the plagues you have heard about did not come near your dwelling it did not destroy your home god kept you from harm give him thanks god kept you only heard it some of you saw it but you are not a victim of the plague you are not a victim of any chemical biological or weapon give god thanks the plague will not destroy you say lord thank you for keeping me and my household from the plague we are alive because the pro you have protected us you have caused the plans of the wicked to fail we thank you in the mighty name of jesus give god thanks some of you may be going through health challenges the bible says by the stripes of jesus we are healed i want you to confess that by the stripes of jesus you are healed the stripes are those where he was flogged with whips the wounds of the whips that those are the stripes the wounds so you can say by the wounds of jesus christ we are healed so keep confessing it over your life you keep confessing that you have been healed by the wounds of jesus and i want you to as you confess it you tell god thank you that the enemy could not steal your life the enemy cannot kill you he cannot destroy you satan comes to steal to kill and destroy he will not steal you he will not steal your life he will not steal your joy give god thanks say lord thank you i'm alive and i will rise up in good health i thank you i am alive i will rise up in good health give him praise that you are alive and you will rise up in good health say lord i thank you i will rise from my bed in good health because you are my god you are the one i trust i will rise i will rise in the mighty name of jesus i will rise i will rise i receive my healing i receive my healing by the stripes of jesus i am healed I receive my healing in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. And now I want you to thank God for your family. Brethren, none of us has arrived at our destination. None of us has reached the peak. You may be having challenges in your home in the form of the salvation of your family members you may have family members that have not surrendered their hearts to jesus christ you may have family members that are rebellious and giving you a tough time you may have friends your spouse may be making you almost regret or if 
or even regret the marriage. I want you to invite God into your situation. I want you to say, Lord, come into my situation. Come into my situation right now. I want you to mention that thing before God and say, Lord, come into it. Come into my marriage. Come into my family. Lord, intervene in my situations in the name of Jesus. I want you to pray that prayer. When you invite God in, God takes charge. When you invite him, you see things change for the better. I want you to say, Lord, in this situation, come in. Lord, intervene in this situation. Intervene in my life. In the mighty name of Jesus, intervene, Lord. Intervene in my family. Intervene in my finances. Intervene, Lord God, in my health. Intervene in every aspect of my life in the name of jesus i want you to pray those of you who are ministers of the gospel who, who are pastors evangelists apostles pray and say lord intervene in my ministry turn things around for your pleasure in the mighty name of jesus i want you to pray that prayer lord intervene in, in my ministry, in every aspect of my life, in my academics, intervene. In the mighty name of Jesus, intervene. Intervene, Lord. In the name of Jesus, intervene. Father, thou shall arise. Thou shall arise and have mercy on Zion for the set time to favor her has come. Lord, in every aspect of our lives, we yield unto you. And we ask, Lord, that you will intervene. We ask that you will intervene. Father, every aspect of our lives, we yield unto you. Intervene in the mighty name of Jesus. Glory to your name. In Jesus' victorious name, we pray. Amen. Amen. And now I want you to let go of every offense. You know, if we don't forgive, the Bible says, if we don't forgive those who hurt us, God will not forgive us. It's not an easy thing to do, I must tell you. It is not easy. But I can tell you this, that it is possible. God will not give us a command that we cannot keep. So no matter how annoying that person has been, no matter what transpired, I want you to forgive. Forgive right now. Just say, Lord, I let go of every offense. And ask God to heal you. Because when someone hurts you, it's like a wound. It causes pain. And it, you can see it. It reminds you. So ask God to heal you of every wound right now. Say, Lord, I let go. I forgive those who have hurt me. Lord, heal me of every wound in the mighty name of Jesus. Just pray like that. Pray like that. Talk to him. Father, I let go of every offense. I let go of every offense now. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, I let go. I let go. I ask that you, Lord, will help me to walk in forgiveness. That I will not uh, remember pain and carry it. I will not carry the pains of the past. Lord, I do not want to carry the pains of the past. Help me, Lord God, that I walk in your ways. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, God. Heal my heart. Heal our hearts, Lord. Heal our hearts of every hurt and pain. In Jesus' name. Turn this pain into gain. Turn the pain that we have suffered to our gain. Lord, you said in Romans chapter 8, verse 28, that you make all things work together for good to those who love you and who trust in you. Lord, we surrender unto you. We say, Lord, turn every pain in our lives to our gain. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus. And now I want you 
uh, please share this video while you are praying. Just click on that share and you can also invite people to watch. You can host watch parties. I want you to confess your sins unto God. Remember, confessing your sins is not uh, God wanting to humiliate you. When you confess your sins, you are acknowledging that you need God to, to cleanse you. It's like you are, you are being baited by God. And you say, Lord, there's some dirt here. Lord, there's some dirt here. There's some dirt under my neck. That is what confessing sin is all about. You are acknowledging where there is debt in your life. You are acknowledging where there is evil, sin in your life. And you say, Lord, wash me with the blood of Jesus. When you don't confess your sins, you are hiding the dirt. And when God washes the areas that you acknowledge, you will still smell sin. So say, Lord, I have sinned in my words. Confess them. The adultery, the lust, the pornography, the, the wickedness, the slander, the gossip, the foolish speaking, quarreling with your spouse, being bitter to your spouse is a sin. Confess it unto God where, necessary, where it is and ask God for mercy. Do that right now. Just talk to him. Confess your sins unto the Lord. You are not confessing it unto man. You are confessing it unto God. You are confessing it unto God. Confess your sins unto the Lord and ask for mercy. Say, Lord, show us mercy. Have mercy on us. Save us. Forgive us. Forgive us. Lord, forgive me. Forgive me, Lord God, in every area I've offended you. In my words, in my thoughts, in my actions, forgive me. Forgive, Lord God, our sins, Lord. Forgive our anger, our wrath our uh, gossiping, rebellion to parents, rebe uh, wickedness to children. Forgive, Lord God, the, uh, the, the bitterness towards spouse, Lord. Forgive. In any area of our lives there is sin, expose it to us, oh Lord. Any area in our lives there is sin, expose it, that we may confess and forsake our sins. Lord, have mercy. Cleanse us with the blood of Jesus. We thank you. Thank you for answering our prayer. Help us, oh God. I want you to ask God to help you to overcome temptation so that you do not commit that sin again. Say, Lord, give me grace to overcome temptation. Give me grace to overcome temptation. Pray that prayer. Say, Lord, give me grace to overcome temptation. In the name of Jesus, give me grace, Lord, to overcome temptation. Father, help us. Help us to walk in your ways. Give us a love for righteousness and a hatred for iniquity. We thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And now we are going to, we are still praying. This is a prayer service. We are praying together. The Bible says one will chase a thousand, two will chase 10,000. It means our prayers are 10 times, at least 10 times more effective. At least 10 times more effective when we pray in agreement. We are praying together. There is no distance with God. Wherever you are, we are together in spirit. I want you to ask God to remove every hindrance to your prayers going up to him very important if there is anything that you are doing or anything that could hinder your prayers ask god to reveal it to you and to remove it right now we want our prayers to be heard we want our prayers to be answered say lord help us help us in the name of jesus Father, we pray that you will remove every hindrance to our prayers going up. Remove every hindrance, Lord, to our prayers going up. We pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Remove every hindrance to our prayers going up, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we pray that if there be any sin, unconfessed sin, expose it to us in the name of Jesus. If there is anything we are in possession of, 
that can hinder our prayers being answered. We pray, Lord God, that you will expose it to us in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. And now I want you to pray and ask God to remove from the way any spirit or force that could hinder the answers of your prayers coming down. You see, in, our, in the previous prayer point, we prayed that our prayers will rise unto the Lord as incense will go up. There was sin in the life of Cain. And that sin in the life of Cain was what uh, prevented his sacrifice in Genesis chapter, chapter 4. It prevented his sacrifice from going up to God. Sin. And so we are now praying and asking the Lord that if there be anything that, that could hinder, any force that gathers to prevent the answers to our prayers coming down to us. Remember the case of Daniel that uh, he prayed. He was fasting for 21 days. And a principality, a fallen angel, was resisting the answers to Daniel's prayer from getting to him. The principality spirit detained Gabriel, the, arch, the angel Gabriel, who was bringing the answers down to Daniel. We are going to pray, Lord, remove every hindrance to the answers to our prayers getting to us. Remove every hindrance to our blessings getting to us in the name of Jesus. Pray like that. Talk to him. Talk to him. Lord, we pray that you remove every hindrance to our prayers. Every hindrance, Lord, remove in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray that you remove every hindrance to our prayers getting to us. The answers of our prayers getting to us. We pray in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask that you will clear the heavens of every principality and power that we try to hinder the angel bringing our blessings to us. We pray, Heavenly Father, that the path will be cleared for the angel you are sending with the answers to our prayers, that the angel will get to us. We pray in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for answering our prayers in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You are going to pray this prayer. Say, Lord, show me what I should pray for. Show me what I should pray for. Do that now. Say, Lord, show me what to pray for. There are times you, you are in a prayer uh, meeting and you forget those things that you need. I only to remember later on and say, oh, I forgot. I should have prayed about this. No. Ask God to show you what to pray for. Lord, we pray that you will guide us, Lord, what to pray for, how to pray. We ask, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that you, Lord God, will take control of this prayer session. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. And now I want you, please share this video. I welcome everyone joining in. Thank you. I see your comments. God bless you for your comments and shares. I want you to keep sharing the video. And now for the next few minutes, I want you to pray. And I want you to say, to ask God for those personal things. You know what you need personally. All right? Uh, there are issues in your life. This is a good time to ask the Lord for divine intervention. Ask him right now. Talk to him for the next few minutes. It is you and your prayer points. Talk to God right now. This is an atmosphere of prayer. Talk to him. Talk to him. Say, talk to him concerning those issues in your life. Talk to him right now and pray for divine intervention. Talk to him. Hallelujah. Talk to him. Speak to the Lord concerning your, your, your life, your, your family, concerning your academics, concerning your future, concerning your career. If you are an activist, concerning your activism, talk to him. Talk to him like, like a father. He's your father. Feel free to speak to him. He is your father. Talk to him 
right now. He is God. He is God. Talk to him. Just talk to him. Talk to him. Say, Lord, this is the situation. Talk, talk to him. There are some of you that are wondering concerning certain things in the Bible. You are wondering. I want you to ask God for understanding. Ask the Lord for understanding right now. Ask the Lord for understanding. Ask the Lord for understanding. Those aspects of the scriptures, those teachings that you want confirmation on, talk to him. Now you are praying concerning yourself. Talk to God right now. Talk to him. Talk to him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Talk to God. Talk to God. Talk to him. He is God. Glory to his name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are God. You are God. You are God. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. In Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for the prayer request, Lord. We ask that our prayers will arise as incense unto you. It's a sweet-smelling saint unto you. And that the answers to our prayers will come back to us. Will come to us, Lord. As the dew of heaven. To come just like rain pouring down. Rain your blessings upon us. We give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I welcome every one of you. I am David Aigona, and this is David Aigona Ministries. Thank you. I see uh, uh, Ram Presh, Siamata. Thank you for joining. Uh, Melanie, good morning. Mary Quart, God bless you. Thank you for joining. Uh, Priyanka Masi, I see you there. Yeah, I see great people. So, Neil. Laura, you're welcome, Laura. Nadi, thank you for sharing. Good morning to you. Terry, God bless you. Thank you for joining. And everyone joining, God bless you. Whether I mention your name or not, I may not see all the comments now, but I'm glad you could uh, participate in this service. It is good. Hallelujah. God bless you. So I'm going to speak briefly on the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, and then I would, and we would pray concerning that. Now, what is the doctrine of the Nicolaitans? I, please share this video. Just do the sharing. God bless you. Thank you for joining. Let's look at Revelation chapter two for us to have an idea of the story. We are going to read Revelation chapter two from verse one to seven, right? Revelations is the last book of the Bible. Revelations is the last book of the Bible. And so let's read Revelations chapter two, verse one to, you want to read? Okay, my son is here too, so I'm not alone. This is David Jr. Hey, you are not listening. Okay, all right. People get to see David Jr. Unto the angel of the of the church of Ephesus, write these things, said he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience, and how thou canst how thou cannot bear them which are evil, and ha, and has tried which are and has tried, which say they are apostles and are not, and has found them liars, and has borne and has and has patience, and for my name's sake has labored and has not fainted. Nevertheless, I I somewhat I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Remember therefore 
from whence thou hast fallen and repent and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly and remove and will remove thy candlesticks out of his place, except thou repent. But this thou hast that thou hast that thou hadest the deeds yes. of that thou hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. He had and he who had an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat the of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Hallelujah. He was reading from uh, the King James Version. So some of you may not be familiar with that uh, with that language, but this is Jesus dictating letters to seven churches. He's sending those letters. Now, the first church is the church of Ephesus. That is a church in the, in the city of Ephesus, right? Jesus is giving them commendation for the words, and, and then he makes mention of, in verse 6, he says, but this thing you have, this is one thing you have, which is, this is something, this is a plus to them, that they hate the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which he also hates. So, uh, um, why is it that Jesus hates the deeds of the Nicolaitans? I did a research on this thing, because it is also mentioned again. You know, it is mentioned again in this chapter 2. This time around, Jesus says the doctrine. Let's look at that same Revelation chapter 2. Just go and um, go to verse 14 and 15. We're going to read still on Revelation 2, verse 14 and 15. You want to read Benjamin? Okay, this is Benjamin, my second son. So, yeah, my, my, my technical crew. But I have a few things against the. Please, eh? But I have a few things against the because thou hast as there them that hold the doctrine of Bela, who taught Balak to to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrificed unto idols, and to commit and to commit fornication. So has thou also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. All right. So you see here again now, he mentions the, it this time as a doctrine. The first time he said the deeds, now he says the doctrine. Because you will do what you believe. The deeds come as a product of the doctrine believed. So what is it about this doctrine of the Nicolaitans that Jesus hates? It is seen in this verse 14. Balaam, he taught Balak to put a stumbling block before the children of Israel. This verse 14 are the deeds of the Nicolaitans. Here Jesus describes the deeds of the Nicolaitans. In verse 15, he mentions the doctrine. So the deeds, the actions, the, the lifestyle comes as a result of the doctrine belief. Let me tell you something. You naturally act what you believe. You can't say, I believe God is in control and freak out. When you believe God is in control, you are calm. That's why Jesus says, peace be still. He says, believe, believe me. Okay? Now, what are the acts of, what was it that Balaam did? If you go to Numbers chapter 22, Numbers chapter 23, there was a person that was hired to curse the nation of Israel. He was hired to curse them. He was a, a prophet, a seer. But he was not an Israelite. But he was one that could communicate with God and he was also able to communicate with the devil. Right? So he was hired to curse Israel and his curses were very effective. The king, the king of, pardon the background noise, 
Yes, Terry, we have birds flying all around. That's a truck just passing by anyway. But we have birds flying all around us. So you, sometimes you hear their musical sound. Very nice. Okay. So um, Balak, the king of Midian, hired Balaam to go and curse. Let me shut the window because of the noise. To curse Israel. And God was against it. God warned Balaam not to do it. But Balaam was greedy and took the money. Just, okay, just leave it. He took the money, tried to put Israel seven times, and he failed each time. Whenever he tried to curse them, God will turn what he's saying into a blessing in that he will be blessing Israel rather than cursing Israel. I will do a picture of that by God's grace. So when he saw he couldn't curse Israel, he told Balak that since God is preventing him from cursing the Israelites, that he can get God to turn against the Israelites if he could convince the Israelites to commit sin. Take note of that. Balaam saw he could not hit the Israelites directly. So what he did was to tell Balak, get the Israelites to commit fornication, sexual immorality, and eat food sacrificed to idols. And this is what he told Balak to do. He said to he told Balak to send beautiful women married and single to stay uh, within uh, how I, to stay in a in a place that they can be seen by the men of Israel. So the Israelite men were able to see them. They were not with the Israelites, but they were within a range that the, the men could see. So these women were parading themselves and acting as though they had something doing, which they had nothing doing, sometimes sitting down. They were dressed in a in a what they call sexy dressing. They were dressed to kill. They were dressed in a suggestive manner. And they were just parading themselves within uh, the sight of the Israelites. They could see them. And the Israelite men, yeah. So the Israelite men left the camp of the Israelites. They went to meet these ladies. And the ladies were not hard to get. The Israelite men started committing sexual sin with them. Some of these ladies were married. And the men, the husbands to these ladies, acted like it was their culture that a man could share their wife. So there was, hello land, there was immorality. The men of Israel were now going there and just going to sleep with the ladies of the Midianites. And these ladies, after having sexual intercourse with the men, they will tell the men, okay, um, we are having a feast tomorrow to honor our God. You are invited. Probably after the feast, we could have some fun. So the men will go with the hope that after the feast, they will go have sex with the women. And the women will oblige. And so while they were hanging around, they, they will sacrifice animals to their idols and then give the food from the sacrifice, the, the animal flesh, they will give it to the Israelite men. And you know what happened? A plague broke out amongst the Israelites. More than 20,000 were killed by that plague. Balaam could not curse Israel so that they die. What he did was to get Israel to bring a curse upon themselves by making sin attractive. So that was what Balaam did. He taught Balak how to get people to commit sin. That is a doctrine of the Nicolaitans. 
And then, let me explain this. Israel was under the covering of God as long as they obeyed God and kept his commandments. Nobody could cross them. Nobody could defeat them. But they brought defeat upon themselves. Many believers bring defeat upon themselves by falling for temptation. So now the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, what is it all about? How did it come? The early church, when they were growing, they had issues with administration. And so they um, selected seven deacons. Seven deacons. The criteria for this for the deacons being selected. Sorry, I don't just know what happened. Okay. Sorry, sorry, it's just a moment. Okay. Something just went on my, my screen here. All right, so the deacons, there were seven. They were spirit, Holy Spirit-filled deacons, people with good reports. They were administrators. One of these deacons, you are not going to find this description in the Bible. This is from my research. One of the deacons was called Nicholas. And Nicholas later on went into apostasy. He, he began to compromise. Yeah. In this life, we can fall from any height. Judas was the treasurer of Jesus Christ's ministry, and he betrayed Jesus. So we should be careful. All right? Having said that, it doesn't mean you are going to fall. Because Peter, who was rebuked more than any other of the 12 apostles, from what we read in the Bible, nobody took the kind of rebuke Peter got. He was the one Jesus said, you be the leader. So don't break down because of uh, the possibility of falling. Be like Peter. Now, Nicholas, the deacon, went into apostasy and began to teach he developed a doctrine, he began to teach that Christians didn't need to stand out. Christians could live a worldly life and go to heaven. Christians, as long as they have confessed Christ, they can do what the world is doing. That, conf that the confession they have made will see them through. They could eat food sacrificed to idols. They could uh dress any how they wanted to dress and um, it sounds familiar right kind of similar to what we have today that was the doctrine of the decolatans that you didn't need to be different from the world you just needed to accommodate other people be friendly with the others whatever they, they can't contaminate you there's nothing you are going to do that is going to take your salvation away this is what is happening. This is the doctrine now. That it's not by works. Just have Christ in your heart and that is all. If you read Revelation chapter 2, and Jesus said, I know thy works. I know thy works. He keeps repeating, I know thy works. The works of the law are those Jew Jewish traditions. That when you you are you are in your menstrual period, you can't touch some things. You are unclean. At the end of your menstrual period, you, you take a ritual bath. The works of the law are um, you need to sacrifice an animal whenever you sin. The works of the law are that the Gentiles cannot have fellowship with God. The works of the law are that you must wear the prayer shawl that you put on the prayer shawl. You know this cloth the Jews wear? They just place it on their head. And then, you know, a lot of believers now wear it and they, to make them feel sanctimonious. Just put on that prayer shawl. It's white with some uh, blue stripes on it. They put it on and they pray and it feels sanctimonious, very holy. Those are the works of the law. 
The Bible says, by the works of the Lord, none shall be justified. You won't be just, you won't be saved by that. So when you see uh, in the Bible say, by works of the Lord shall no man be justified, it is not your character. All right? This doctrine of the Nicolaitans was there then. It is here now. And people think that when they say a prayer, the sinner's prayer, they live whatever life they want to live, that they are all right with God. Jesus said, I know thy works. I know thy faithfulness. He emphasized it. And when he was rebuking a church, he said, I know thy works. You have a name, you are alive, but you are dead. There are a lot of Christians that have the name Christian, born again, but they are dead spiritually. The doctrine of the Nicolaitans is what we have today, the hyper grace doctrine. Because your, the Bible says faith without works is dead. The works being referred to are the fruit of the Spirit. The works being referred to are your proof of commitment, your labor of love. That is your works that God is going to reward you. So the devil has slipped in this doctrine of the Nicolaitans again. And it is so widespread that people feel they have, it's not by works, it's not by works. It's, it's, it's by grace. Once you just pray and that's all, drink, smoke, do whatever you want to do, it's not by works. I'm telling you, pardon me, I was faking the accent of one preacher, a Nigerian preacher that um, he felt to be internationally recognized. He had to fake an American accent. And so his fellow, his followers keep faking American accents, um, thinking that makes them worthy to be watched by people in America. Very unfortunate. But this guy has been preaching such trash, and a lot of pastors are preaching such trash, sending people to hell and making them look forward to go to hell. They are excited to go to hell. They don't realize what is happening. The doctrine of the Nicolaitans is so destructive that Jesus singles it out and declares his hatred for it. Throughout the scriptures, you don't see Jesus say he hates anything. You hardly see it. But here he emphasizes, he says, I hate the deeds of the Nicolaitans. I hate the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. It has placed a stumbling block to my people. Revelations chapter 2, verse 14. He said, This doctrine is a stumbling block. A stumbling block. You know, when somebody is walking and then you just throw your leg out so the person falls down. We used to do that a lot when we were children. We were crashing each other. When someone is running, we just throw the leg, the person falls down, we laugh. And then the person does the same back. That's a stumbling block. When somebody is moving, you cut the person off, the person falls. Jesus shows his hatred for this doctrine of the Nicolaitans. Because this doctrine is placing a stumbling block. A lot of believers are swept away thinking that all they need to do is say the sinner's prayer. And that is it. They are heaven bound. That is not true. So now we see the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. In the last few minutes of this prayer service, we are going to be praying and asking God to expose every stumbling block in our lives. A lot of ministers have placed a stumbling block in front of God's children. A lot. A lot. They tell people, all you need to do is give your tithe, attend church service. Now that churches are, are shut down, so what happens? They tell you, all you need to do is bring that money and all is well. I will pray for you. When the man of God lays his hands on you, you are heaven bound. And people actually believe that nonsense. Jesus said he hates the deeds and the doctrine of the Galatians. Remember, the person that brought that doctrine that Jesus hates was one of the seven deacons, first deacons of the church. It was somebody that once was full of the Spirit of God. 
the Bible says that the criteria for those deacons was that they should be full of the Spirit, they should be of good report. So it was someone who was standing strong that began to teach this doctrine that Jesus hates. And that is why you should study the scriptures. When you are listening to teachings, read the Bible, check the verses of scriptures and ask God to give you understanding. You notice that in our Sunday services, we spend about 10 to 15 minutes praying. Why is it that we spend 10 to 15 minutes praying? Why don't I just come and say, oh, God bless you. Today I'm going to be teaching. Go straight. No. The reason I say we should pray for 10 to 15 minutes is because I want your spirit to be conditioned to receive from God. I want your spirit to be tuned up to heaven's frequency so that when I open my mouth, what God says comes through my mouth and it gets to you and you receive it. And if I say anything of my own opinion, you will know the difference between my opinion and the word of God because you are tuned up to heaven's frequency. That is why we spend 10 to 15 minutes in prayers before I teach on Sundays. It's deliberate. Because when you are, there's an atmosphere of prayer around you, you are going to be tuned up to heaven's frequency. You will be tuned up to heaven's frequency. And you will discern. You will know what is right and what is wrong. Because the greatest damage to the church has been done by people that were once leaders in the church. There are popular evangelical leaders around the world, so-called evangelical leaders, popular preachers around the world, that initially they were right with God. Right now, they are lovers of money. A popular preacher in the United States was saying, I watched a, a video, he was saying that this year, God told him his ministry is going to make $300 million. And that he was determined to see it happen, whether corona, whether there is a virus or not. His ministry must make that three hundred million dollars, and it was so clear. You know, he, he he commands a large crowd. He is a mentor to many popular ministers, but this man needs to return to Christ. The, he is measuring the success of his ministry by how many hundreds of millions of dollars he makes. It has become a business. Because God does not measure a man's success by the abundance of goods he has. Jesus made that statement. A man's life does not consist of the abundance of the goods that possessions he has. So your ministry is not based on how much money you rake in. And I tell you, what is this man going to do? When the the, the holiday, the virus holiday is over. He doesn't care the financial situation of his followers. He's going to tell them that to break out of that recession, you sow a thousand dollars, a hundred dollars. He's going to do that. He is going to do that. He's going to tell them, you are broke, even if you are broke, so if I sell what the little you have and bring it to me, because he wants to meet that target of 300 million, which I know is not God that sent him, because God does not contradict his word. If he had said a million souls will be won through the main, his ministry, I would say that would be God. That sounds like God. To say that this year, God told him he will make 300 million dollars. Wow. And he doesn't care what is, go is going to happen. Yes, he's been known for telling people to buy their miracles with a check. He's a popular evangelical preacher in the US. I just don't feel like mentioning his name. But I want you to look out for people that say such things. If I mention his name, your focus would be on that man. 
But as I have explained what he said, you will focus on anyone that speaks like that because he's not he's not the only one. Pardon the background noise. It's not terrible. Okay, so anyone that talks like that, recognize that person as a wolf in sheep's clothing. One that carries the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. Right now, I want you to pray for the next few minutes. Say, Lord, expose any error in my life. Expose any doctrinal error in my life. Pray that prayer right now. Lord, expose every and any doctrinal error in my life. In the name of Jesus, expose it. In the name of Jesus, Lord, expose every doctrinal error in my life. In the name of Jesus, pray like that. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, expose, Lord, every doctrinal error we have. Any doctrinal error. If there be any doctrinal error, any error in doctrine, that we preach, that we believe, Lord exposes and, and correct it. We pray in the name of Jesus. Father, show us any way that we are following the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. That doctrine you hate. Lord, show us that we, Lord God, may repent. Lord, deliver us from false doctrines. Deliver us from false teachings. We pray in the name of Jesus. Lord, help us to identify and to reject false teaching and false doctrine. Help us, Lord, to identify and to reject false teachings and false doctrines. We thank you, Lord. Give us understanding of your word. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want you to thank the Lord for this service. Thank you for this service. Just say, Lord, thank you for this service. Thank you for your blessings that have come to me in this service. Thank you. Thank you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for this service. Thank you for your word. Give us understanding of your word. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your love. Thank you, Lord. Glory to your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Father, we just thank you for this service. Thank you. Lord, we thank you. And we go in your name. We go in your name. May your presence go with us. May your presence go with us and abide with us. We pray in Jesus' name. I rebuke every sickness in the bodies of my brethren. I rebuke sickness. That's why I'm participating in this service. I rebuke the sickness in them in Jesus' name. Be healed. Receive your healing now. If there's anyone being believed for, anyone that is being prayed for by those participating in this service, receive your healing. Receive your miracle in Jesus' name. Receive your deliverance in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you all. Thank you for participating in this service. It's good to fellowship with you. There is no distance with God. The Bible says, wherever two or three are gathered in my name, I will be there. That was Jesus said. So, wherever you are, we are gathered together. Hello, Robert Walker. Thank you for joining. We are gathered together as one. We are gathered together as one. In the presence of God. You may be in China, you may be in uh, Ukraine, America, Canada, Argentina, Europe, Britain, Wherever you are, we are gathered in the presence of God as one. 
And the Bible says Jesus is in our midst. The Bible says one will chase a thousand, two will chase ten thousand. So our prayers are at least ten times more effective when we pray together. It is better we pray together than I come and I just start prophesying. I, I say, I pray, I do this, I do that. God will hear my prayer, but you will not grow spiritually. And that is why you have people that keep looking for who will lay hands on their head. They continue. They go to this person. He prayed. It worked. Okay, fine. They go. They have another trouble. God wants you to be a carrier of miracles. God wants you to be a carrier of his presence. God wants you to be a solution to your world. God wants you to carry his power wherever you go. And thank you. Please... Um, those of you who, who have good ideas and suggestions on how to um, improve our uh, broadcast and our ministries activities, please feel free. Suggestions are welcome. I was blessed on Sunday by Terry. Terry helped in that uh, she sent a link showing how I could take Facebook videos and upload them on YouTube. You know, we're having issues with uh, not having sufficient equipment. And, uh, and so I couldn't go live on Facebook and YouTube, but God used Terry to help. And now I'm uploading uh, Facebook Lives to YouTube. And it's going real good, just from Facebook to YouTube. There's a way it is done. And those of you who follow my YouTube channel, David Ivana Ministries, you will notice that even the videos from the Spanish page, the Spanish page are coming up. I'm going to be uploading those videos from my Spanish page. For those who do not know, I've been having uh, services in English and in Spanish. In the Spanish page, David Ivana Ministries Espanol, I'm joined by interpreter, right? So we have the service and uh, she interprets. So now I'm able to put those videos from the Spanish page into YouTube and share the link. Uh, so people in Spanish-speaking countries have been watching the YouTube videos now through YouTube. Those that are not on Facebook can have it on YouTube. Thank you all. Thank you for such suggestions. You see, I need you. I don't know it all. I need you. I need you, all right? God placed something in you that I don't have. God brought us together to help each other fulfill his purpose, all right? We work together to fulfill God's purpose. So I welcome suggestions and um, I also welcome donations too because the ministry needs the donations. We have activities, crusades we are planning. Well, there is a vacation, a, a virus vacation. We are planning crusades. Immediately the travel bans are lifted. They are going to be having it. So we are working. And even on ground, we are doing what we can to also transmit and do the many things we do in the ministry. Many. So we do need your financial support. Please do, do use the GoFundMe and also send me a message. I will send you a link, a secure link that you can use to send donations. So thank you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. And Father, I pray for the finances of your people. I pray that you protect their finances, protect their properties. I pray in this time, in this time of famine, in this time where a lot of people are in lack, that people will be in abundance like you did it for Isaac that he so planted in the land when it was dry when there was drought and famine and he reaped a hundredfold maximum harvest with minimum conditions Lord I pray that in this time your people will prosper prosper Lord and we pray 
I pray, Lord, that they will not forget that you are prospering them, that your work may be done, that they will not forget to support your work. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you and see you. And those of you who have um, Spanish-speaking friends, you can go to my YouTube channel, wherever you see um, a Spanish title. Some of them have Spanish and English titles. You know that that's from my Spanish page. You can send them videos. And uh, you can also go to the Spanish page. For a while now, for a few months, I've not been putting services there. Uh, for some reasons, but soon I will resume again. But I'm going to be uploading the videos, previous videos on the Spanish, from the Spanish page to YouTube. So when you see a Spanish title, it is me speaking in English, my interpreter speaking in Spanish. God bless you and see you again.